Band on the Run is Paul McCartney's biggest selling album outside the Beatles. Now, on the occasion of its 50th anniversary, comes a brand new half speed vinyl remaster and an album of rough mixes they've called Band on the Run Underdubbed. In this video, we're going to look at both of these albums in detail to find out what they are and, more importantly, if they're any good. I'll also tell you what I think about these beautiful looking headphones. I'm Andrew from Parlogram and, better late than never, welcome to our review of the new editions of Band on the Run. Band on the Run is an album which needs no introduction, but if you want one, check out our recent in-depth 50th anniversary video about it, a link to which is in the description. Bringing something new to the table with this album can't have been an easy task. After all, it was already given the full archive treatment by MPL back in November 2010. Personally supervised by Paul, that set was well received by fans, although some felt it still lacked important elements from its initial development. Fast forward 14 years and another piece of that puzzle has been added, in the form of this, the underdubbed mixes, or how the album sounded before Tony Visconti's orchestration was added. But before we get into that, let's first have a look at this, the new 2024 Half Speed Vinyl Remaster, and find out if it deserves a place in your collection. Now the headline news for this new Half Speed Remaster is that they've gone full US on it, meaning that it includes Helen Wheels, which of course wasn't on the original UK edition. It also replicates the US cover design, which besides listing Helen Wheels, has the photos of Paul, Linda and Denny on the back in a different order to that of the UK original. And also, unlike the UK edition, which has Paul McCartney and Wings on the spine, the spine on this new edition mirrors the US one, which reads just Paul McCartney, Band on the Run. Now, none of that is an issue for me. I'm more concerned with how it sounds. Band on the Run is a great sounding album. Superbly engineered by Jeff Emmerich, it's a remarkable sounding record. And like most remarkable sounding records, it's been reissued many, many times over the years. For me, the UK Dash One first pressing sets the benchmark as far as audio is concerned. Of the other pressings I've heard, only the Audiophile Nimbus pressing from 1984 is better. And before you ask, no, I haven't heard the US 1981 Columbia Half Speedmaster. Now, one of the first questions I had concerning this new Half Speed Remaster is how different, if at all, it is from the 2010 edition. Well, in order to find out, I got in touch with the man who cut this new edition, Ace Mastering Engineer Miles Scholl at Abbey Road. He told me that MPL see the McCartney archive collection as their gold standard. So although the versions he works on are always freshly remastered with half-speed cutting in mind, MPL like him to keep the sonic signature of the mastering similar to that of the archive collection. But at the same time, they are aware that he has different equipment and a customized lathe so some differences will occur. As with all of the half-speed mastered editions which come from Abbey Road, it's a premium pressing and is manufactured at Optimal in Germany, widely recognized as one of the best pressing plants in the world. So its mastering and pressing credentials are second to none, but what does it actually sound like? Well, I'm happy to say that compared with the Sublime UK first pressing vinyl, this new remaster really shines. And that's not surprising because that UK first pressing was used as a reference for this cutting. Put side by side, its waveform is just as rich and dynamic as the first pressing. 
The original US pressing, just for comparison, isn't bad, it's just slightly more compressed. My copy was clean, flat and quiet where it should be, and sounded terrific throughout. Yes, it was cut from a digital source, but you'd be foolish to discount it for that reason alone. Digitally cut vinyl done right, as in this case, can sound terrific, and I'd say this is an upgrade, albeit a subtle one, over the 2010 vinyl. And it's those subtle differences which I think make this new remaster the best sounding yet. If you already own a UK original pressing or the 2010 archive edition and you're not a fan of Helen Wheels, well, maybe this isn't the one for you. But for those who've been collecting this half-speed remaster series with their coloured side strips, it's a no-brainer. By the way, someone mentioned that the inner sleeve on this pressing is missing the lyrics to Helen Wheels. Well, nothing new with that. They were missing on the original US inner too. That's something I think they should have fixed. The CD, on the other hand, which I didn't buy, uses exactly the same mastering as the 2010 edition, so don't expect any upgrades there. The album has also been mixed into Dolby Atmos by Giles Martin and Steve Orchard, which I listen to on Apple Music via my AirPods Pro. Now, whilst I love my original 8-track quad mix of this album, Atmos takes it to a whole other level. Giles has really delivered with this Atmos mix, which sounds great on headphones, but must be incredible in a dedicated room. These Atmos mixes are just getting better and better. They're putting a lot of effort into this medium, which bodes well for future releases, and the idea of investing in some proper kit to appreciate them fully is starting to make more and more sense. Now, as you probably already know, these underdubbed or rough mixes were done by Jeff Emmerich and Pete Swettenham at Air Studios on the 14th of October 1973, after the group returned from Lagos and before the overdubs and orchestrations were added. Now, many so-called classic albums stripped of their overdubs and embellishments don't fare particularly well, but in the case of Band on the Run underdubbed, it could be said that this is a case of less is more. Now, if there's one negative thing to say about Paul's records is that he does have a tendency to overproduce. But the stripped back nature of these tracks really highlights the strength of the melodies and the quality of the musicianship. And the vocals shine through brighter than ever before. And what incredible songs they are. Let's take a closer look at them. Band on the Run is in essence a very simple song, but has so many layers which all fit together perfectly. Paul's vocal doesn't sound as smooth as it does on the release version, but I think that suits the vibe and is, like most other tracks here, refreshingly different. Another thing to note here is that the underdubbed album has a different track order to that of the released album, which is also refreshing, and I think makes for a more interesting listening experience. Like Band on the Run, Mamunia's stripped-back organic sound highlights its strengths. It's such a simple song, so beautifully recorded and delivered. No Words may not be everyone's favourite off this album, and it's also one which doesn't yield as many differences as some of the others, but there are some subtle details which make sure it doesn't disappoint. The underdub mix of Jet is one of the tracks which really shines on this album. Paul's vocal is up front and centre, and what a vocal it is. And I love the bonus vocal ad-lib at the end, which laid out the melody for the song's jazzy ending. This mix also brings out Paul's drums much more, and those power chords are to die for. However, I still find that single almost constant note from the Moog synthesizer slightly annoying. Bluebird is a song of such quality that you could do almost anything to it and it would still be magical. Even the removal of Harry Case's masterful sax solo doesn't hurt it, but even though it's not there, my brain hears it anyway. Like no words, Mrs. Vanderbilt is not a radical departure from the release version, but it fits perfectly into the underdubbed vibe. 1985 is presented as an instrumental on this album, and it really works well. This time, the Moog gives the track an appropriately sinister feel and sets a darker mood, 
broken only by Linda and Denny's wonderful harmonies. Picasso's last words, with its loose, laid-back, late-night vibe, really benefits from being underdubbed. The vocal harmonies are so cool here. And although I love the orchestration on this track, it's not missed, and I think the song works well without it. Like Jet, the Lennon-esque Let Me Roll It is another highlight of this set, with Paul at the top of his game vocally. It's not my favourite track on the original album, but it's my favourite underdubbed mix. But what's yours? Do let me and everyone else know in the comments. Like you maybe, I was initially sceptical when I heard about the underdubbed concept, but I really enjoyed the raw talent on show on this album, not to mention the quality of the songs themselves. Underdubbed is a refreshing way to listen to songs I've heard a thousand times, and unlike some extras albums, this is one I will be returning to. All we need now is the same for Ram. Now I went for the double vinyl edition, which has the new remaster and underdub disc in this slipcase, which I think is a good quality product. This was 59.99 euros. The CD, although much cheaper, doesn't look as good value when you take into consideration the album CD is just a straight copy of the 2010, albeit with Helen Wheels added, and there aren't even any liner notes. If I wasn't a vinyl junkie, I'd be going for the streaming option for underdubbed, but do let me know in the comments which one you went for and how you thought it sounded. It was hoped that the 50th anniversary would bring out the Wings Mark II demos, but it was not to be this time. Those are now the holy grail as far as the story of this album is concerned, so let's hope they emerge someday. At the time of writing, Band on the Run is number 16 in the UK album charts, so let's hope that this encourages MPL to consider doing a bonus disc for Venus and Mars, and get the archive series moving again. Now if you watched last week's unboxing episode, you would have seen me not only unbox the album, but also this beautiful looking set of headphones. These are the 99 classics from Meze Audio. After spending hours of listening not just to Band on the Run, but many other albums too, on both my main system and through my phone, I can honestly say that these are the most comfortable pair of headphones I've ever used. These pads, which are replaceable by the way, are so soft and comfortable on my ears, and there's enough space inside the cup so that your ear can breathe and not touch the inside of the speaker. And this elasticated band means no more fiddling around with sliders or buttons. They fit perfectly. Just like that. Although better without a hat. Not only are they the most comfortable, they're probably the best looking too. Now I'm a real sucker for dark wood, and these gorgeous walnut ear cups are right up my street. These gold accents may not be everyone's cup of tea, but that's not a problem, as the 99 Classics are available in silver too. If you'd like to see more detail about the cabling and what's in the box, check out last week's unboxing video, a link to which is in the description. Now of course the big question is, do these headphones sound as good as they look? Spoiler alert, yes they do. The 99 Classic's major strength is that they are incredibly musical headphones. They have a fantastic rich and full bass, so if the music you listen to has a lot of that, you're in for a real treat. That low-end warmth is carried through into the mids, which again are very musical and well-balanced, and the high-end is excellent without being sharp. These are such smooth and easy to listen to headphones, and you can listen to them for hours without feeling fatigued in the slightest. These are headphones to relax with and soothe you like a comfortable armchair after a hard day. And because they're very sensitive, they're very easy to drive and you don't need a separate headphone amp to drive them. Just plug them directly into your system, phone or computer and you're away. Now being closed-backed headphones, there is some isolation from the outside world, but personally, I wouldn't use these outdoors. That's what my AirPod Pros are for. Now the best place for these is inside, in a comfortable environment, when I want to kick back, relax and just enjoy the music. If that sounds like something you think you'd enjoy too, simply click on the link in the description and take a look at them for yourself. And if you'd like to order them, you can use the code PARLOGRAM20 for a 20% discount on your order. 
Meze also make these cool bracelets too, in copper and silver. So thank you Meze for giving me the opportunity to experience the 99 classics. I love them, and maybe you will too. I really hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to check out our Patreon page to see what we're currently working on, as well as exclusive content you won't see anywhere else. I'll be back next weekend, but it's all over for this one. So I'll say bye for now, and thanks for watching.